Well, today's video is sponsored by Black Gold Compost Company. We want to thank the good people over at Black Gold for their generous donation of all this black cow cow manure that we're using in our video today. Thank you for sponsoring our channel. Well, good morning, Homestead family. I got a melon I wanted to just share with you today. It's called a Savor Melon. We'll be right back. <music> Well, welcome back, friends. I got my Savor melons planted in a tray, ready to grow. I got my seeds at johnnyseed.com, so if this sounds like it might be a uh, melon that you're interested in growing this summer, uh, get the seeds over at Johnny's, check it out, and give it a try this spring. I just wanted to share with you a little bit about what this uh, melon's like, um, what you can expect. Um, Again, I have never grown this before, so this is a first for me. I like to try new things every year in the garden, and this year this is something I'm trying for the first time. It'll take about 78, 80 days to harvest, so not that really long of a wait. And the fruits that you'll get off of this, you can expect them to be about two pounds, which is a great size for a personal melon. And the skin itself is kind of a grayish green, and the sutures, around the melon will be uh, kind of a dark green and the uh, the flesh inside is actually a real bright orange so and it's supposed to be very fragrant too so i can't wait to see what it smells like but anyway um when these uh fruits are getting ready to harvest uh, the the skin itself will turn kind of a pale yellow um, and the tendril, the first tendril right at the um, fruit attachment to the stem, that tendril will start to turn yellow and brown and, and, turn and die off. That's pretty much ready to harvest. So I grew a whole tray of this simply because um, I want to put some in the earth bed over in the uh, melon garden. And I want to put some on the trellis and see how they do on a trellis, being that the fruit's kind of small. I, I really should have no trouble growing these on a trellis. So we'll try it both ways this year, and we'll see how it works out. And then we'll do a taste test. So let me get these over to the seed rack so we can get these things germinating. Well, there we go. Got our Savor melons in the seed start rack off and running. We'll be back in the days ahead, and we'll watch this all the way out to harvest. We'll see you soon. Well, welcome back, friends. It's been about a week since we uh, started our Savor melons out here in the seed starting rack and they have emerged. They're looking pretty good today. So I wanted you to just to take a look at them and see where we're at. If you look up close, you can see that uh, the seedlings have come up and uh, they've got their codlin leaves on right now. So I'm leaving them in the seed starting rack until I can see some um, true leaves emerge because remember right now the seedling is uh, really actually living off of everything coming from that codlin leaf they they're not ready for the full sun yet so i'll um wait to see some uh, true leaves emerge which i think i should be able to see that within the next seven days as soon as i see some true leaves emerge we'll pull them out from under the uh, seed starting rack here and get them right over onto the hardening table and let them start, uh, you know, sucking up some of that uh, sunshine. We'll get them hardened off, and at that point, we'll take it to the next step. So we'll be back in about a week. See you then.
Well, welcome back, Homestead family. Our Savor melons have been growing for 17 days and they are ready to go. I've got uh, two true leaves on each plant, so um, I think I'm pretty much ready to get these guys over in the uh, trellis and also in the uh, melon bed in the in the ground. I want to try it both ways this way uh, this year since you know we never grown these before, so. We'll try some on the trellis as well as in the ground, and we'll see which one seems to be the easiest and best way to grow for us. So then we'll know from then on. So let's head over to the uh, trellis. I, I just got through um, prepping one of the trellis beds a couple days ago, and I put in my spaghetti squash out there on you know, part of that trellis. So I want to use the other end of that trellis to uh, experiment and test out the savor melon on it. And then we'll head over to the uh, to the melon bed. And we'll put in some mounds of um, melon. So let's get started. Okay, there we go. We got the easy part done. We got the um, Savor melons installed on the trellis. I got in uh, 15 plants over here. I think they'll do fine over here. So um, 
I got them fertilized with the bone meal, the blood meal, got it staked up with the uh, bamboo canes, ready to start making its way up to the trellis. So let's head on over to the uh, melon garden over there and see if we can't pick us out a place to uh, install the remainder of these plants over there in the ground. Let's head on over. Well, this is the melon patch. I guess y'all remember a few years ago when we, we built this, and since then I've added a, a silage tarp that covers the entire patch. And uh, instead of taking this tarp off, what I'm gonna do is leave the tarp right where it is, and I'm just gonna cut a hole in the areas that I want to um, install a mound and uh, of, of soil, new soil, and that's where we'll plant our melons and allow them to run all over this silage tarp. And then I don't have to worry about weeds just taking over this whole bed and smothering out my melons. So um, what I'll do is I'll mix up some of our container mix, you know, the three equal parts of uh, peat, black cow, cow manure, and some potting mix, just like we always do when we're doing container plants. And I'll do that same mix and formula right here in the hole in the bed. Because remember, underneath this uh, bed, uh, underneath the silage tarp is nothing but Florida sand. So terrible to try to grow stuff in. So um, with watermelons and uh, melons and that kind of thing, the sand is kind of pretty good you know, so we'll, uh, it kind of likes that sand. So we'll mix that in, incorporate that in with that sand under there and add in some bone meal and some blood meal. And I think we'll be um, pretty successful with our uh, save or melons. I think we can probably get uh, maybe just a couple of rows here is all I really need. Uh, I don't, I think I've only got about 15 or 20 plants left. So that's, that's plenty because in each mound I want to put, you know, a couple of uh, plants to, to let them uh, grow from there. So let's go get the wheelbarrow and get some uh, ingredients and uh, we'll start getting this job done.
Thanks for helping me. <laughs> well, I'm going to enjoy the fruit too. Ooh. So that's a little bit of a hard job for old people. Mm -hmm, but we got it done. Well, I tell you what, when we when we go uh, watch TV and watch us a movie at night, and we have a little bowl of that for a little treat, it'll be worth it. It'll be worth it. It always <laughs> is. <laughs> so there we go. We got. Um, let's see. What did we get in? Ten. We got ten heels of uh, of the save or melons installed uh, we'll keep our eye on this in the days ahead as it continues to grow all the way up to harvest we'll see you soon mm -hmm. well good morning friends welcome back our Savor melons out here on the trellis are doing really pretty good. Uh, it's been five weeks since we planted them out here, and um, I wanted to um, let you take a look at how they're looking. They are running across the ground, which is what is natural for them to want to do. They want to run out laterally and flat and long. So um, what me and Nancy need to do, it's time for us to come out here in the next day or two, and we're going to take these long runners that are trying to crawl out of the bed here, and we're gonna help them up against the trellis and tie them on with a little piece of garden twine to help them get a start. Once they get up there and they, they lay against that trellis a day or two, the little tendrils will find it and they will um, climb themselves at that point. But they do need a little help to get them going. These plants are doing a little bit slower than the ones that we put over in the earth bed and the only reason for that is, is uh, this is the first year I've used this bed and um, I just amended it with the black cow. And it usually does much better the second growing season that uh, I start a new bed. The first growing season does okay, but once I do the second growing season, I hit it with the black cow again and incorporate that in with the existing soil from the year before. And they seem to do uh, you know, like twice as good. So it's not surprising to me that these plants are a little bit smaller than the ones over there because that bed over there is a little bit more established. But anyway, as I can see, the bees are working in these little blooms. They're covered in blooms and uh, it's gonna be an exciting day in the days ahead. So let's head over here to the uh, melon patch. Let's take a look at the Savor melons that are growing over there in the uh, melon patch. See you over there. Well, here we are over here at the uh, the melon patch and the 10 heels of, uh, of the Savor melons, as you can see, are thriving. And they've got some really nice long vines that are running off of them now. And they are free to roam and grow and do whatever they want to do over here and just grow out laterally. And they seem to do, be doing very well. So they're covered with blooms right now. I don't see any baby melons just yet, but I don't think it's going to be that much longer. But anyway, we'll keep our eye on these melons in the days ahead and we'll watch the progress and all the way out until we can harvest one and take a taste test. We'll be back soon. Well, welcome back, friends. Our Savor melons have been growing for seven weeks today. And uh, if you look up close, you can see they're actually starting to, uh, some fruit are starting to show up on the vine, which is very exciting. And they're still pretty young, just getting started. And we're looking forward to the days ahead when we uh, can actually pull some of this off and eat it. But the vine itself, you know, a couple of weeks ago, me and Nancy came out here and we, uh, we tied these uh, vines up onto the trellis and, and now the tendrils are able to grab onto these, uh, uh, this trellis here, this cattle panel, and they are, they are doing the job now. So we're pretty happy about that. 
Uh, we noticed some pickle worms down on our spaghetti squash uh, a couple days ago, and Miss Nancy is spraying right now some uh, Thuricide BT mixed with some baking soda, and we're going to just spray it in it's the, the whole trailer system out here um, just to catch uh, what we can with it. Um, there's no, I don't see any pickle worms on um, this uh, Savor melon at all, so we're going to go ahead and treat it to be proactive. Uh, the baking soda will help with the uh, powdery mildew. I don't see any real problems with that right now, but we'll go ahead and be proactive and do it all at the same time and uh, keep that under control. Um, the uh, the, the uh, Savor melons over in the, in the melon patch are doing pretty good too, so we'll go over there and take a look at that as well. Well, here's our 10 heels of um, Savor melons over in the melon patch, and they're doing pretty good over here. The, as you can see, the runners, some of them are six, seven feet long now. They've even started to uh, cross over the, uh, uh, you know, the in-between path here of the heels and touching each other. <laughs> so um, they're doing great. There's some um, fruit starting to show up in here as well, a uh, little bit of um, mildew in a couple of spots not very bad at all but miss nancy's going to be hitting this with the uh with the same solution that we're doing over on the trellises as well so we'll take care of that today and um, this guy these these 10 heels here are just covered in blooms so we're hoping that um, the bees will come in and find these beautiful flowers and hopefully they'll help me get this stuff pollinated and we'll get a little bit more fruit than what we're getting i'm not seeing very many fruit compared to how many blooms I'm seeing. So we're hoping that uh, that'll get a little bit better as the plant matures a little bit more and summer comes on a little stronger. So we'll be back in the days ahead. We'll keep an eye on both the uh, trellis as well as the uh, melon uh, patch over here. And we'll keep you updated on the Savor melons all the way till harvest until we can taste them. We'll see you then. Well, good morning, friends. Our Savor melons have been growing for 11 weeks, and believe me, it has not been without a challenge. Uh, the pickle worms, uh, the big mistake I made is I planted spaghetti squash on the trellis right next to the trellis with the Savor melons, mm -hmm. and boy, them, them pickle worms gave us a fit on that spaghetti squash, but unfortunately, by doing that, they migrated over and they started getting into some of our melons here too. So not as bad as a, as a squash, but still we lost <laughs> quite a few. But anyway, we got some that are ready today. I, we just want to get a cup, two or three of them uh, to show you what they look like. And also I want to have some for uh, a little snack tonight while mm -hmm. we watch TV. <laughs> yeah, we love having melons for a snack. Let me grab one. I just want to show you one up close and then we'll grab some from the trellis and maybe a couple over there in the earth bed in the uh, the melon bed over there. And then we'll go over there to the harvest area and slice one open and give it the old taste <laughs> test. Here's one right here I wanted to show y'all. I don't know if you can see this right here. You see this tendril that's right next to the fruit? These, this first set of tendrils, you see how they are dyed back and browned? Let me get the leaf out of the way. See the, see the tendrils? When you see those tendrils die back like that, they're the first tendril from the fruit stem, and uh, you pretty much got yourself a good ready-to-go fruit. Um, this one, you can see that the, the fruit has changed colors a little bit, and you see the lines in here that are turning a little bit dark green. That means it's pretty much ready. 
and as you can see they're not very big it's like a little personal it's a personal um, snack personal personal fruit so let's go ahead and grab a couple more of these and uh, we'll head over to the harvest area Well, I guess we got a, enough for a snack tonight, right? Oh, definitely, <laughs> and some to share. I'm sure Mama would love some. <laughs> we got a whole bunch of them. Yeah, we got plenty more out there in the garden we didn't pick yet, but mm -hmm. um, they grew just as well on the trellis as they did the earth bed. It's just yeah. it, it got compromised by the uh, pickle worm over there mm -hmm. and the, uh, the, the melon patch. It was much further away. It's like 50, 60 yards away from the trellis mm -hmm. over there, so... It, they didn't get to them. Mm -mm. But anyway, I thought we would just, let's cut one open and just do a little taste test on them, okay? All right, I <laughs> love melons. Mm. Wow, it's beautiful, huh? Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. It definitely mm -hmm. smells like a cantaloupe. Mm -hmm. Let me get you some of these seeds out of here. Yeah, save it for the chickens. Oh, yeah, them chickens will love that. <laughs> yeah. Mm 
I didn't do too good of a cut job there. That's all right. You're doing fine. Mm. There you go. Mm -hmm. Let's see how you like that. Okay, we okay, we'll both try it. Uh-huh. Okay. Mmm. Sweet. Good. That is sweet. It's it tastes like a crunchy um cantaloupe. Mm-hmm. With something else. Mm. It's not quite a cantaloupe, but I don't know. That that's pretty good. It's pretty good. Mmm. It's good. Mmm. I like it. <laughs> Very juicy. Mm-hmm. Wow, it's so good. I would go as far as to say we need to grow this again. Oh, definitely, <laughs> definitely. We're going to grow this from now on. <laughs> that and mui, I mean, chummy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that was a pretty good little tasting melon. Mm. Um, you know, it has you know a beautiful inside, and uh, it cuts up just like you do a cantaloupe, mm -hmm. and it tastes really refreshing. Wow, I really like it. You know what else is what you keep saying all the time is, you could just smell how fragrant it is around the house and everything else yeah. with these. That's very fragrant. Yeah, so it's like you don't even need room fresheners. You could use this. <laughs> yeah, you save money on air freshener if you, <laughs> you leave some of these laying around the house. Yep. Uh -huh. Anyway, we thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed our little journey on this experiment for our first time growing a Savor melon. And I love to try something new, at least one or two things every year, mm -hmm. new in the garden, just, mm -hmm. to, just to find and discover new things that you like. Mm -hmm. And this one is definitely a good discovery. Mm -hmm. I think it tastes just great. Mm -hmm. And uh, I hope that y'all had fun watching it and following along with us. And that maybe our video brought a, a little smile to your face and a little joy to your heart on this day. So until... Me and Nancy, see you next time. Always remember, by, by his hands, hands we are fed. fed. Give us, Lord, our daily, daily bread. bread. Amen. Amen. Have a blessed day. Ooh, this is so good.